All right. Good afternoon. Um, I have a senior appointment to <coughs> to announce. Uh, today, the Secretary General is appointing Gada Fati Wali of Egypt as the next, exec next executive director of the UN Office of Drugs and Crime. Ms. Wali will also serve as the director general of the UN Office in Vienna. She succeeds Yuri Fedotov of the Russian Federation, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his dedicated service to the organization. Ms. Wally brings to the position over 30 years of experience in the field of sustainable development, poverty reduction, and social protection, women and youth empowerment. Currently Minister of Social Solidarity, a position she's assumed in 2014, Ms. Wally has developed the National Anti-Drug Strategy, led a nationwide drug awareness and prevention campaign among youth, and pioneered innovative programs to rehabilitate and reintegrate persons with substance abuse into society. Her previous positions include her time as the UNDP Assistant Resident Representative in Egypt. Her full biography is available in my office. And this afternoon, the Secretary General will speak at the first meeting of the Group of Friends on Digital Technologies. He will stress the impacts of both positive and negative of digital technologies on international peace and security, sustainable development, and human rights. And he will call on the Group of Friends to support UN initiatives like the High Level Panel on Digital Cooperation to mitigate the risks of these technologies and ensure that everyone can benefit from them. And the Security Council is holding an open meeting, uh, followed by consultations on Somalia. The Secretary General Special Representative, James Swan, told Council members that Somalia, together with its international partners and friends, wants to see the progress made in the past decade, including building state institutions and the military gains against al-Shabaab consolidated in 2020. He stressed the importance of political consensus, especially ahead of next year's elections, as well as the adoption of an amended federal constitution to address the threat posed by al-Shabaab and economic uh, threat posed by, and as well as address economic development. His full remarks have been shared with you. At 3 p.m., the council will reconvene in close consultations to take up the issue of Cyprus. And yesterday afternoon, uh, Bintu Keita, the Assistant Secretary General for Africa, reminded members of the Security Council that the situation in the Sahel is of serious concern and that urgent action is needed. Since the beginning of the year, she said security incidents have tripled in Burkina Faso. For example, 489 incidents have been recorded so far compared to 151 last year. Terrorism is a common problem, she said. Uh, and she called on the international community to support the G5 Sahel Joint Force and also to renew their efforts towards development initiatives in the region. And Najat Rojdi, the senior humanitarian advisor to Ger Peterson, the special envoy on Syria, condemned today in the strongest terms the missile attack reportedly fired from Syrian government-controlled territory that hit densely populated Ka camp for internally displaced people and exploded near maternity hospital in Idlib. At least 12 people were killed, including some 50 injured, including children, with confirmed casualties expected to rise. Ms. Rojdi called on all warring parties to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure and to abide by their obligations under international humanitarian and human rights law. The humanitarian tragedy unfolding in Syria must come to an end, she said. The Deputy Regional Humanitarian Coordinator for Syria, Mark Cutts, also condemned the attack in the strongest terms and called for a full investigation. He reiterated his call on the parties of the conflict to take all necessary measures to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure in line with their obligations under international law. And turning to Myanmar, the Secretary General Special Envoy, Christine schreiner Bergener wrapped up a 10-day visit to the country. She met with the government and Tatmadaw officials in the capital and also participated in the opening ceremony of the third consultation forum for religion, religion for peace. Next year's election, she said, um, on next year's election, the special envoy held talks with several groups, including Europe. Union Electoral Commission, representative of the main political parties in Parliament, Rohingya and Rakhine political leaders and activists, 
for discussions focused on voting rights, eligibility for elections, and encouraging women's participation. In northern Rakhine State, she met with local officials, community leaders, and with returnees to understand the experience and needs. She also traveled to Sintet Mao camp in Paukau to speak with Kanan and Rohingya internally displaced people to hear their perspective and expectations. And in Rakhine, the special envoy noted that the toll of the continued clashes between Arakan army and the Tatmadaw are taking on people. She called on all sides to protect civilians and respect international humanitarian law, stressing for the need for combat to stop. Um, and a note on Papua New Guinea and Bougainville, uh, voting in the referendum on the political future of Bougainville in line with the 2001 Bougainville Peace Agreement begins on the 23rd of November in two days and will take place over two weeks. Voters will be choosing, choosing between two options, greater autonomy or independence. The vote will lead to consultations between the two governments on the way forward. The referendum will be observed by more than 100 international observers representing the Commonwealth the Pacific, and the Pacific Islands Forum, as well as Australia, European Union, Japan, New Zealand, the UK, the US, and the Australian National University, and more than 140 domestic observers. The United Nations has been providing technical support to the referendum process and to the ongoing dialogue process between the two parties. We will continue to support, at the request of the parties, the post-referendum consultation process. And in, from Lebanon, the special coordinator, Jan Kubish, called upon the leadership of the Lebanon to urgently nominate the prime minister, designate, start the mandatory process of parliamentary consultations, and maximally accelerate the process of a formation of a new government of personalities known for their competence and integrity and trusted by the people. He believes that such a cabinet formed in line with the aspirations of the people and supported in the, by the broadest range of political forces through the parliamentary vote of confidence will also be in a better position to appeal for support from Lebanon's international partners. I would like to make it clear that the special coordinator, Mr. Kubish, has not otherwise intervened in the details of government formation, its character, or its composition. So as that remains a sovereign matter for Lebanon and its people to decide. Um, bear with me, Evelyn. We're not done. Um, Mark Lokok, the head of the Humanitarian Affairs Department, is traveling to um, South Sudan for, excuse me, to Sudan for a three-day visit. His first to the country since the transitional government was formed in August. Mr. Lokok will meet with senior government officials, diplomats, and agencies in the capital Khartoum. He will also travel to Kassala in the country's east to visit health facilities and meet people impacted by recent economic shocks and disease outbreaks, as well as youth volunteers responding to the situation. Erratic uh, weather, multiple diseases, outbreaks, and economic crises have led to 8.5 million people, including nearly 2 million who are internally displaced, needing humanitarian aid. These needs are expected to increase uh, further. And turning to the Central African Republic, uh, over 8,600 children associated with armed groups have been released in the Central African Republic between 2016 and the middle of this year, making the country one of those on the children in armed conflict agenda with the highest number of children released. While this in itself is a positive development, a new report by the Secretary General on Children in Armed Conflict in the Central African Republic shows that children continued to endure dreadful acts of violence. While the inclusion of child protection measures in peace agreements was a milestone of, said Virginia Gamba, the special representative, mechanisms to tangibly end and prevent grave violations against boys and girls and to verify the compliance of signatory parties must be implemented. And uh, tomorrow, there will be a pressing. My guest will be um, Alain Nudehu, the humanitarian coordinator for South Sudan, along with Mohamed Ag Ayoya, UNICEF's representative in South Sudan, and Camille Kamalundin, UNDP's rep resident representative in South Sudan. They will be here to brief you on the humanitarian development situation in the country. And later in the afternoon, or hopefully not in the evening, Ger Peterson. Uh, will be speaking at the stakeout after the consultations and the open meeting on Syria, which starts at 3 and hopefully will not end past 6, given the new measures. See, there, are, there is some good news. Um, 
And just as a reminder, today, uh, Harlem Globetrotters are visiting UN headquarters. There'll be a basketball demonstration at 4 p.m. in the visitor's lobby, as well as a photo op. And if you have uh, want to get your vision uh, checked, uh, they're, they're in the lobby all day today. The UN Friends of Vision Group, under the chairmanship of the permanent representative of Antigua and Barbuda, Dr. Webson, uh, have set up special eye health exhibits where we can all get our eyes checked. Halas, yes, Fetty, yes. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, there are two uh, uh, worrying uh, reports, one from Hong Kong and the other one from Nicaragua. The Hong Kong is a group of protesters uh, isolated in a campus and uh, with uh, exits uh, closed by the security forces. Uh, in Nicaragua, there is another group uh, of protesters whom they are uh, surrounded uh, inside a church. Uh, Secretary General, have any uh, comment uh, on these uh, two incidents to the respective governments of China and Nicaragua? Um, on Nicaragua, we've been following the developments in Masaya, uh, the, that city which is not far from Managua. Uh, and, and recent statements issued by the international community. The Secretary General is concerned about the situation. He calls for full respect for human rights and the right to a peaceful assembly as a means to overcoming tensions and reiterates his long-standing call for good faith and dialogue. Uh, as for the siege of the, um, of, uh, the siege, the situation around the university in Hong Kong, uh, we very much hope that it will end. Uh, it will end peacefully, without uh, and without violence. And we would encourage dialogue. Uh, did, I'm sorry. Follow up. Uh, did the Secretary General intend to issue a statement in, the, in this regard? Or well, I mean, I've, you've asked me. I speak on his behalf. So uh, at least, <laughs> that, that, that at, least as, <laughs> at least I hope I, I was told I did up until a few minutes ago. So yes, Evelyn, and then we'll go to Edie. Yes, on that very horrible attack on the IDP camp in Idlib, are you allowed to say who did it? Though the press reports have well, Damascus I mean, I, I think we, doing we, it. We we have, as as you just heard, our Najat Roshdi, our, our humanitarian advisor colleague, um, said it's as far as they know, it's the the missiles were fired from government controlled areas. Yeah, Edie. Thank you, Steph. Does the Secretary General have any comment on the killing of the S Somali Canadian uh, peace and human rights activist uh, Almas Elman? It's been raised in the Security Council this morning during today's meeting. Yeah, I mean, it was. We, we very much, uh, first of all, send our heartfelt uh, condolences to her family and her friends. We know she was a, a strong voice for peace. And reconciliation uh, in the country. Um, I think I, our colleagues in Mogadishu are trying to get a bit more information as to uh, exactly what happened. But if this is indeed uh, targeted, uh, she was targeted, we obviously condemn it in the strongest possible terms. One second. Nabil. Uh, Secretary General, in his uh, latest report on 1701, commended uh, the role the Lebanese army is playing mm -hmm. in uh, protecting uh, protesters uh, yeah. in this crisis. So can you elaborate more? Um, what does the SG think that uh, the Lebanese army can do to uh, maybe reach a political solution for the crisis? Uh, should the army be part of consultations on the political solution? Um, what is uh, like... Uh, what does he hope? No, I mean, the Secretary General is not uh, advocating for a specific uh, role for the Lebanese armed forces. As, as uh, I just said from Mr. Kubish's statements, uh, we, we are, uh, Mr. Kubish's statements were statements of, of principle trying to um, encourage the Lebanese uh, leaders to form a government as quickly as possible. Exactly how we get to that, that is up to uh, to the Lebanese people. I think what the Secretary General was referring to in his comment is, is for the most part, the restraint we have seen uh, from the Lebanese uh, security forces, by and large, in how they've been dealing with, uh, with these demonstrations. Uh, Betul. 
Thank you, staff. Two questions. A follow up on the IDP camp at Czech. Can you tell us how many people there were in the camp? Also, a question on Cyprus for the consultations at the Security Council this afternoon. Is there a UN briefer? My and understanding yes. is that Rosemary De Carlo uh, will be briefing. And would she talk to the press after the briefing? <laughs> If we were to wager money, I would not wager money on it. No, I don't think she plans to speak to the press as much as I would like to um, make your wish come true, Beitul. Ali, and then we'll go to the front. And the so, and I, so I don't, I don't know. I have to find out. Oh, I'll ask. Yes. Well, since, uh, oh, sorry, Ali, and then, yeah. I'm little... Since you speak on behalf of the Secretary General, whether, uh, can you please tell us whether the Secretary General is going to celebrate Thanksgiving, or he's going to pardon a turkey, or? Uh, no, we, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, uh, we, we did have Canadian Thanksgiving not long ago. I don't know uh, what animals uh, the Canadians uh, pardon. Uh, I, I doubt that the Secretary General will participate in any of the uh, traditional uh, American um, rituals around Thanksgiving. Um, but I do hope uh, that you all enjoy your Thanksgiving. As a reminder, we will not, uh, the office will be closed on Thursday. Uh, we will be open on Friday, but we will not have a briefing unless there is breaking news or is Turkey he, escapes. Is the Secretary General going to comment uh, or to issue a statement about Anka elections? <laughs> I have enough problems <laughs> without you. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I have a follow-up after my question as well, if I may. Um, does Secretary General know about this new situation in Iran? Does he follow it? Does he have any comment? And my follow-up is, uh, since many governments around the world, they, they cut internets to the activists, to people, so the news does not come out, can UN do something that uh, open up the door for uh, pictures, videos, Wait, voices <coughs> to come the, out the, so people can share? The, the UN does not control the internet, contrary to what possible conspiracy theories may be out there, but we do not control the internet. As I said yesterday, uh, we obviously are following the situation uh, in Iran. We're very well aware of the reports of significant uh, death toll in the, in the recent uh, demonstrations, and the Secretary General echoes the statements made by the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Um, including the immediate reestablishment of people's access to the Internet. The reason I mentioned UN and Internet, because UN has so many offices and they have their own Internet, their own access outside. We do. So, we, we, so it, it, I think can, in just about every place we work, we access through... Nor, we don't have, have a separate Internet. We access the Internet like everybody else does. Thank you. Senora. Stefan, coming back to Nicaragua, um, the Catholic Church, ha Church has been one of the targets of the Ortega government during the past uh, few months, according to the um, archdiocese um, locally. Um, the latest events, um, especially the church and the um, impossibility for some of the members of the church, especially one of the priests in Masaya, to be able to get out, um, will this maybe um, start a process where um, the UN could get involved in terms of a dialogue. We understand that eventually, uh, at one point of the beginning of the protest with the students, that was uh, a talk that was managed between the UN and then um, the Catholic Church as well as the, the government of Ortega. Do you see that this could be a point where something well, could be As a matter done? of principle, the UN is always available to help uh, facilitate any dialogue if we're requested and all the parties involved. Uh, agree. I will have to check with our country office colleagues to see what involvement they may have had at the local level that I may not be aware of. And a follow-up, um, the hunger strike is started because of the over 130 um, uh, young people that are detained, and that's why the mothers and the Catholic Church are doing the hunger strike. Um, is there any efforts to try to see what the conditions of those um, detained and um, the, the possibility of see if their due process follow in their case well, we would expect people who are detained uh, to have due process afforded to them uh, including access to legal services and and, and, and the you know basic uh, at least at least at minimum basic uh, due process but I let me check with our country office colleagues mr. Barda um, more serious um, 
Uh, U.S. Uh, Congress members sent a letter to the Secretary General with mm -hmm. regards to 1701 and uh, uh, Hezbollah and Iran. Do you have any comment on that? No, I, I think the, the letter, my understanding is that the letter was received. Uh, as with all letters, we will, uh, we will answer it. The Secretary General's position on 1701 could not be clear, and every word of it is included in his uh, recently released report. Thank you all. Uh, I was going to say have a good weekend, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, uh, now I have a back injury. I can't. I was asked.